I love democracy. I love the Republic. In today's build video, we will be giving freedom a chance, we're going to be going fanatic egalitarian and giving the vote to all of our population. Whilst that might seem like a crazy and harebrained idea, don't worry ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be using it to do some unholy things like having psionic pops that absolutely do not mind having robots in our empire. Yes, you heard me correctly, psionic pops that are very happy to live side by side with robots. All of that and more will come up as we play today with the Ganlarev Commissariat, share quite a few traits with other meta builds I've shown you before. That includes prosperous unification giving us extra pops and districts at the start of the game along with 20 years of lovely bonuses, having an ocean world as our starting world so that we can get our hands on, the aquatic trait giving us massive habitability of 100% on all of our starting worlds along with extra bonuses to our basic resource outputs. I'd recommend you also go with something like Rapid Breeders for extra pop growth speed because in Stellaris pops are king and intelligent to increase our research speed. For negative traits to counterbalance this, at the beginning of the game Unruly is really not going to impact your empire and later on you can use some pop modding you can use some gene modding to get rid of this trait. Quarrelsome is not usually a trait you'd see here, but in this case, we're going to be getting a lot of our unity, especially early on, from things other than jobs. So this 10% here shouldn't really matter. Furthermore, because of all the other bonuses you get in the game, this minus 10% is closer to an effective minus 5%. Now we get to the core feature of this build, the thing that sets it apart, and that is the civic parliamentary system. Parliamentary system has recently received an update. Now what it does is it gives all of your factions plus 40% to their unity gain, but on top of that, factions will form in your empire very shortly after the game starts, usually in the first couple of months. We are going to be using this parliamentary system, this faction, system to maximize our output on all of our worlds and produce boatloads of unity. When we combine that with Fnatic Egalitarian to increase our faction unity gain by another 50%, it's going to get really crazy. When it comes to the ethics choices of this civilization, I've gone for Fnatic Egalitarian and Militarist. Militarist is to help us by giving us the No Retreat War Doctrine later on, which is very powerful, along with the Ship Fire Rate bonus but it would be reasonable to go with egalitarian and spiritualist. Now, why have I chosen fanatic egalitarian and drop spiritualist altogether? Well, I really don't want the spiritualist faction forming in my empire. I'm going to do everything possible to stop it. And because it won't exist, I'll be able to do some things which would be regarded as quite unholy. You should of course go for something like Masterful Crafters for the second Civic. That's going to increase our consumer good productions of artisans, meaning we need less pops working on that job in our empire. And every three industrial districts will grant us a precious, precious building slot. And that's going to be super helpful in the early game. And if you're enjoying this video, please vote with that like button. The starting moves you make with this empire are really important. I'd first recommend moving to a civilian economy, changing to the isolationist stance, and buying some extra consumer goods and alloys to make sure you can get your hands on your first colony ship as soon as possible. Once your factions are formed, it's time to take a look at them. From the faction screen, we can see all of the different issues the factions have and what effect that is having on their approval. Why is this so important? Well, if we get the approval of our factions to different levels, that will increase the happiness of any pop within that faction. Basically getting them over 60% gives you 5% extra happiness and if you can get them over 80% you'll get a total of plus 10% happiness. Increasing the happiness of your pops increases their approval rating and a higher approval rating increases the stability of your planets. Higher stability then gives you more resources and trade value. So basically, by increasing this approval here of our factions, we can sneakily get a plus 5% of happiness pretty much across our empire, which equates to about 3% extra resources. We also get unity from our factions, and this is going to mean your unity generation right out of the gate is pretty insane. Note here that we'll be getting a total of plus 100% to this unity gain, 40 from parliamentary system, 50 from fanatic egalitarian, and an extra 10% from isolationist. This unity gain is basically the support of the faction, how many pops are members of this faction in your empire, multiplied by their approval. So we want to maximize both the approval and support of our political parties. 
To do that, the first thing I think you should do is promote egalitarianism. That's going to give you a massive 85% possible shift into egalitarianism across our empire. And in order to make sure that pops actually make that move, we can use the Encourage Political Thought Edict, which increases the ethics shift chance by plus 100%. This means that it decreases the amount of time it takes for our pops to move from the current factions they're in, basically the militarist faction, over into our high approval and high unity producing Freedom Party. And at this point I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is really, really appreciated. If you'd also like to support this channel, there is a link to Patreon down below in the description and you can click the join button just below this video. On your capital, you should fill up these initial building slots with extra research land. And don't forget to clear the sprawling slums as soon as possible to get your hands on an extra pop. When you run out of space for research labs, make sure to swap out this commercial zone for another research lab. When you can't build any more research labs on your planet, it's now time to build the third industrial district. This will open up one of your locked building slots and increase your production of consumer goods. Definitely take the robotic workers technology if you can find it. On your first colony, I would turn it into a factory world and start filling it up with industrial districts and producing more and more consumer goods. One of the cheapest ways to do this is by using the automation. When it comes to traditions, start with the prosperity tradition and then take the standard construction templates. And after standard construction templates, I would spec into discovery and just take science division to increase our research alternatives. That is very helpful early on to make sure you get the technologies that you need. Then you should go back and complete the prosperity tradition tree. The finisher effects here are fantastic. And I would use the ascension perk to take executive vigor allowing me to trigger the capacity subsidies edict all the way across my empire. If we take a quick look back at our factions now, due to this massive approval and our usage of the encourage political thought edict to increase the shift chance, we now have 84% of our pops following the egalitarian faction, which is giving us lots and lots of unity. Make sure to keep your eyes on the lookout for a maniacal scientist. We need one of these and we should put it into our society research to increase the chance of rolling the psionic theory technology. If we're planning on going to war at year 30, supremacy should then be your next pick for tradition and we'll try to complete this tree. Around year 17 or 18, you should switch from civilian economy over to a militarized economy and then turn this factory world into a forge world. You will now start suffering a bit of a deficit of consumer goods, but you should have built up quite a large stockpile and that should last us the next couple of decades. At this point, you should probably also allow resettlement and move some pops over from your other worlds to this primary alloy world. That should give you a reasonably healthy alloy income, which you can keep increasing. Hopefully between year 20 and 30, you will roll the psionic theory technology. And when you complete your second full tradition and that psionic technology, you can take the mind over matter ascension perk. Normally we would now have a problem. Due to the fact that our empire has psionic pops on it, the spiritualist faction should start to form. However, because we have such massive attraction to the egalitarian faction, we hopefully can suppress the spiritualists right into the dirt. And that means you will never have to worry about the spiritualist faction being upset with all of the robotic pops on your empire. But make sure if you go beyond the droids technology, you do grant all of your AI pops citizen rights. Otherwise you might have a bit of an issue when they want to join your parliamentary democracy as well. Overall, this build performs pretty similar to the other builds. Don't forget to build your fleet around year 27 or 28. You should be able to build around 15 to 20,000 fleet power worth of ships if you're min-maxing this like a pro. What's really interesting here is the parliamentary system. However, just before going to war, I'd actually recommend you swap it out for Distinguished Admiralty. As you no longer really need all of that extra unity for a short amount of time, you can get away without that bonus. And the massive ship fire rate as well as level three admirals and generals is going to help your empire in the future conquest to bring democracy and liberty to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. I briefly mentioned how we can optimize this build a little bit more by using the planetary automation features. If you'd like to know what I'm talking about and how you can use planetary automation to the best effectiveness, click the video on screen now.